Bingo, we're back. Five o'clock rock. Special show today. You know, one of the things about Hawaii is um, that, you know, we, we grow some great kids. And it's important that we grow kids in, uh, may I call you a kid? Yeah, I'm yeah, call you a kid. Yeah, I'm a college student. <laughs> and uh, we, we grow them in science and technology, and some of them are really, really bright. And, and you know, we have a, it must be the water in Hawaii. We have kids who are really <laughs> fabulous. And one of the kids I've been following since he was in the sixth grade, and he's not much beyond that, sorry, <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> but not, not but he's now. in USC now as a student, is Christopher Lindsay. And his mother, Holly Lindsay, and they, they, they hail from uh, Iolani School. And what's really interesting is that uh, despite his fabulous success in so many ways in the science fair and in other, in other uh, science programs at Iolani and statewide, uh, Christopher Lindsay has actually dropped out of high school. And I want him to, I want him to explain that to you. <laughs> Christopher, welcome to the show. Oh, nice to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Again, it's wonderful to have yep. you here. You're so smart and articulate. Yeah. I love having you on the show. Oh, so nice. I know it's it's a it's a quizzical thing to say that you dropped out of yeah. high school, but uh, it's not it's not exactly that, is it? Yeah. Well, people get out of people get a laugh when I say it. Um, but yeah, USC uh, offered me a good deal to come early uh, to their university as part of their resident honors program. And so I decided to take the uh, full ride scholarship that they offered me. And uh, full ride? Did you say full ride? Yeah. That means everything. Yeah, everything. Everything is paid yeah. for. Oh, okay, okay. It's, <laughs> it's very generous of them, and I'm very thankful. And my parents are very thankful too, because I'm sure. USC is uh, about fifty thousand dollars a year. And <laughs> oh wow! Uh, so by four. So years, what did they like been, about you? What was it? The um, tie. It was the red tie. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> my ties that got me in. No. Um, I think they liked my, my resume with all the science programs that I was only able to do because I'm from Hawaii, and my uh, extensive research in the science fair with both the fields of astronomy and in environmental science. And at USC, I'm actually going to double major in, in, in astronomy and environmental science, so I'm continuing that. It doesn't sound like it's the same thing. It yeah. sounds like it's a little disparate. Can yeah, you um, establish the relationship? The, the majors are definitely uh, separate in terms of the, the tracks of classes you have to take. Like, yeah. uh, the astronomy major is uh, basically a physics track and, a, and an extensive math track, while the uh, environmental science major um, is a biochem track. So I'm going to try and do all three uh, major branches of science uh, while at USC. And yeah, just science and technology is, uh, is just split up into physics, bio, and chem. So you know, we to talked to Sarah Fagans. She's mm -hmm. a researcher at HIGP today. Yeah. And she's doing research about uh, Europa, which is one of the moons mm -hmm. of Jupiter. Of course, yeah. you knew that. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they are speculating that there's water on there mm -hmm. and there's heat on there. And maybe, just maybe, there are microorganisms yeah. on there. So really your cool. study of biochemistry may come in handy. Space Maybe biochemistry, what do you think? Yeah. So astrobiology would definitely be a field that I'm interested uh, in. And Hopefully, I get to continue that at USC. I'm doing a research. I'm part of a research group at USC, uh, where actually one of their jobs is to provide ground-based observations of the Juno mission, uh, which is orbiting around uh, Jupiter right now and taking data of uh, Jupiter and its moons. So, um, hopefully, I'll be involved with that. Uh, at least on the ground for now. Seems like ages ago, but I remember the day when you were a younger person and you invented, rather discovered, an exoplanet. Can you talk about that for a oh, minute? Yeah. What happened there? How'd you do that? Um, so back just before ninth grade, uh, I was part of a, a European uh, Space Association mission called uh, CORO, or Convection, Rotation, and Planetary Transits, Transits, which is a space telescope mission that's looking for exoplanets just all across the sky. And, uh, those what, are what's an exoplanet so okay. they know? So an exoplanet is a pl any planet that's revolving around a star that isn't our own sun. Okay. Um, so we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, which are all, well, not Pluto anymore, but Can the rest of them. Can you put that to music, actually, Chris? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Maybe I can. Uh, I'll have to get a music major for that, too. <laughs> no. Uh, so any planet that isn't uh, part of our solar system is an exoplanet. And uh, since... Um, there's many stars in the universe, therefore there are many planets, and planets are the only uh, type of uh, space body we know of now that can support life. Uh, so studying exoplanets is our best chance of discovering extraterrestrial life outside ah, of our solar system. Ah. 
So there you were recognized nationally mm -hmm. for the discovery of this exoplanet. Yeah. Did they did they call it the uh, Christopher Lindsay <laughs> exoplanet? No, it's called Corot 29b. Um, but I was a co-author on a paper in astronomy and astrophysics discussing uh, some of the discoveries of the Corot mission. Uh, that's when you were in the ninth grade. Yeah. So that's that was a while ago now. Yeah. Three, yeah. three years. Yeah. Three years ago. Yeah. 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 So USC offered you this full ride even though you weren't finished with high school. And they said, Chris, it's okay. You can come out now. We don't need a high school diploma yeah. from you. Is that what they said? Yep. Yeah, basically. Um, so they really wanted to have me, and I really wanted to be part of the astronomy research group there. So it kind of worked out, and our relationship is good. Yep. Now, you had you, other people from Hawaii have ever uh, gotten into this program? Um, I haven't heard of any other uh, people going to USC um, early, but there are other... Uh, other astronomers that have gone through the RHP program, like I have, I have a close friend who's mm -hmm. also um, part of the same program and in the same research group as me. And family, you've had family that have won scholarships like this. Oh, um, my sister didn't go to USC; she went to Princeton. Um, okay, but well, all right. she got a uh, she got a similar prize, which I think we're going to talk about later, the Davidson Award. Uh huh. Yeah. What is that? Um, so the Davidson Award is a award uh, given by the Davidson family, which is a uh, is a family that created Math Blast, which is a, was a popular uh, educational math software back in the 2000s. Um, and they made a, a lot of money there, and they wanted to give back in the fields of education. So the first thing they did was uh, they built a school um, in Nevada, in Reno, Nevada, and they, they built this like, school according to their terms. So there's like no grades. So kids <laughs> just go and they finish classes as soon as they can I and, love and it. work hard. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I, I actually know uh, two people from that school, and they turned out really well. So the Davidson family did really well there. But they also wanted to encourage uh, outside research, not part of a, like a school curriculum program. So they made this Davidson Fellowship Program, uh, which is where they give money in, in large sums uh, to people that, who write or uh, produce good research or music or literature portfolios uh, like out of a school curriculum, so an extracurricular a uh, research project um, can get you a really good scholarship oh, yeah. through this Davidson and, program. And you get a good scholarship and you do well and you're, you're set yeah. uh, in science for life. Yeah. <laughs> so is there anybody else in the family got into yeah, the Davidson so program? You want to mention anybody, any other names, for example, the people who also won the <laughs> Davidson Award? So my sister, Melody Lindsay, yeah. uh, won a Davidson Award, a $50,000 Davidson Award in, uh, in heart performance. So she's actually a scientist now, um, and, a, I, and a harpist, actually. So she's doing both. Harp and science? Harp and science. Well. And she lives up in Montana, where it's currently negative 40 degrees. So <laughs> I'm glad. So who's happy, I'm right? I'm glad I'm not there. She actually <laughs> loves the, she likes the cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. So And then um, I won a $50,000 award uh, this past year in uh, the field of environmental science with my uh, project called Hohonukai, which was uh, involved building underwater time-lapse cameras and using them in various sites around Hawaii. I've seen those, well, the, the early ones. Yeah. I, we made a movie of Chris and his friends from Iolani way back in, God, it must be five or six years ago yeah, anyway. Yeah, that was a while ago. An Iolani project, and I, that's the day I met you and, and your mother, Holly, mm -hmm. sitting yep. over there. Hi, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> A family that stays in science. I mean. yeah. So we have a fantastic um, sort of photo collection. Yeah. And we're going to go through some of these really interesting photos uh, that Chris has brought down. We're first going to take a short break, though. When we come back, we'll see a photo collection with some really interesting things and people all about studying science at USC. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama, and I'm from Kalihi Palama. Spent 20 years in Tokyo, Japan. Came back after the great earthquake. I watch Think Tech all the time and hope everybody follows it on the internet because it is a program that is devoted to the future of Hawaii and brings all concerned citizens together to create a better society for all. Seven 
<laughs> we're back. We're live with Chris Lindsay. The title of our show here on Think Tech Talks is Mr. Lindsay Goes to Los Angeles. That's where USC is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do your, uh, your slideshow okay. and see what we have. This ought to be interesting. Okay, what's that? Okay, uh, this is me speaking at the National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. This is where the uh, Davidson Award Ceremony was held and has been held for the past few years. Uh, so there's a couple winners. There's about 20, uh, 25 winners, um, but there's only uh, three or four or $50,000 winners. Um, so we all give a talk on what our research was about to the rest of the winners as well as any other people that want to come. And former Davidson Fellow laureates can also come and see what the, uh, oh, the current great, Davidson great. One Fellow... One big happy family. Yeah, the current <laughs> Davidson Fellow winners are, are doing. And so I met a lot of very interesting and smart kids over there too. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, let's, next one. Hon um, Honor, uh, you mentioned that, Honunukai. Oh, Honunukai, oh, yeah. Oh, Honunukai. Yeah. I can um, do this. That's the name of my, uh, my camera system. So you can see in the bottom, uh, me holding it, uh, that's a uh, prototype. So it looks a little better than that now. That one looks a little rough. Um, but this was at the uh, International Science Fair. Um, is this the one in Ritsumakin? Uh, no, this was at, uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh. So, oh, this is yeah. International Science Fair uh, after the Hawaii Science Fair. Yeah. You sort of go down, you won at the local level, yeah. at the Hawaii level, and went to the uh, national yeah, so the, international. So the kind of hierarchy of science fairs, it would be the, dis uh, the school fair first, yeah. um, which is just presenting to your school, and the school decides who to send to the district fair. Yeah. Uh, so for Iolani, which was my high school, yeah. um, it's all of the HAIS, the independent schools. The highest, yeah. Yeah, and they have their own science fair, and then they decide two people to send to the international science fair and also from the district science fair you can also qualify for the state science fair which was always one of my favorite events to go to yeah. each year and then beyond that and beyond that would be the international science and engineering fair um, which has many many countries over 70 countries represented every year and all of the students are really really smart and they compete in a multitude of different categories so mine was environmental science um, and I won third place in my category for environmental science. What was your project? In uh, that Hohonukai project where I built uh, cameras and used them to look at uh, uh, underwater munitions uh, uh, around Hawaii. The mustard gas. Yeah, the mustard oh, gas. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Pearl Harbor and, yep. uh, during the war. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a uh, Margot uh, Margo Edwards yeah. Pro program. Yeah. yeah, she's my mentor. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be here today because she had a really bad sore throat. We'll, we'll catch her again. Yeah. yeah. We'll get her again. Now, now what about Ritsumeikin? I'm confused. Ritsumeikin is yeah. going to Japan, and you went there a number yeah. of times and participated in their science fair also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was more of like a, like a collaboration, like a, just a get-together of science groups from, again, around the world. Um, fewer, much fewer, though, uh, than in International Science and Engineering mm -hmm. Fair. Um, but Ritsumeikin is actually a project as a group, um, and that's, that group project uh, we looked at sharks and their behavior around uh, Mackay Research Pier over um, in Kaneohe Bay. And uh, after that, I was actually connected to my current mentor, Dr. Margaret Edwards. So that's how I met her and how I got started with all this other underwater time-lapse camera stuff. Here's a shout out to Margot Edwards. She's yeah. fabulous. And she knows how to mentor <laughs> people and change their lives. Oh, yeah. Okay, Maestro, we, we need some more photographs now. Let's see what we got. All right, okay. what do you got? What um, is that? Is that you? Is, this is research in progress. Yeah. Uh, so um, this was before my uh, cameras went off of Waianae, uh, about a few miles off the Waianae coast. And they went down, they got set down, and they looked at a mustard gas container from after World War II, which uh, the Army had dumped there, because that was the uh, normal way to get rid of uh, m munitions at that yeah, time. They weren't thinking environment yeah. in those days. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so I wanted to see what kind of effect these munitions were having on the environment now um, because we don't know if they're still leaking or uh, if they're still having effect on the animals. So I set a camera up and just watched them uh, for about a week, uh, day and night, and looked at the animals' behavior over time. You designed the camera? Yeah, and uh, built that pipe frame and... Yeah. yeah. How, how deep did it have to go? Um, so I had a couple different iterations of the camera. The uh, first one I made was actually housed in aluminum half inch thick aluminum with one and a half inch thick windows. And that's really robust. And uh, that one could go down to about 500 meters. That's uh, depth, 1,500 which is, feet. Yeah, yeah. which is uh, 50 times the atmospheric pressure we're feeling now. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was a really tough one. Um, even so, even though the windows are so uh, thick, one of them actually caved in a little bit. 
on the way down, um, but fortunately the glass didn't completely fail. What's the pounds per square inch at 1,500 meters? Ooh. I'm not entirely sure. It's something well, in the thousands. You want to calculate it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have one. <laughs> it's probably about an elephant sitting on every square inch okay. of you, though. Where, where, where did you, where, what did you find in your inquiry? Yeah, in that so um, my cameras uh, looked at these munitions over time, and they actually discovered lots of animals living on top of the munitions and favoring living on the munitions rather than living off the munitions. So these munitions are kind of. Uh, forming artificial habitats yeah. and artificial reefs for, yeah. the, for the creatures it's down so there. so interesting. Um, all the contents have already leaked out, so they're not dangerous anymore. Yeah. Um, and now, they're, now yeah. animals are living on them. I've seen octopuses, uh, starfish. But it's a fish, lesson, all sorts though. Of stuff. It's a lesson. We shouldn't do that again. Yeah. You definitely shouldn't uh, put more toxins. You could put just, just like the stainless steel down there, but, but not what was in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, let's uh, go to the next picture. What are we? Oh, there's more. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, so this is a different frame you can see. Uh, this is not actually my uh, camera frame. This is the uh, NOAA's Bot Cam, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric It looks a lot like yours. Are they copying you? <laughs> nope. Um, it's completely different. <laughs> yeah, so this one actually looks at a bottom fish population. So this one uh, isn't designed to last for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, this was on the uh, NOAA ship, the Hi'iolokai, and I was testing my, uh, my camera housings to make sure they could go down uh, to the proper depths. Um, which was? Which was uh, for the PVC pipe plastic housings. Um, I wanted them to go to around 200 meters, which they could. Mm -hmm. And I tested them thanks to NOAA's help. Mm -hmm. um, but I also did uh, some work with their bottom fish population research, which is looking at the uh, red snappers in the Maui Triangle and uh, seeing how many there are because right now the way we determine how many fish there are in our environment is by looking at catch data. And catch data is like nice, but it doesn't really Not help. Not very accurate. It doesn't really help because once you have the catch data, oh, all those fish aren't in the environment yeah, anymore. Really? <laughs> so, because you caught them and you're eating them. Yeah, so yeah. it's better just to take pictures of them yeah. um, and count them that way, which is what I was working on. Okay, next picture. Ah, yeah, this is that's this you is and Mark. The that's the famous Dr. Edwards. Mark Margo Edwards there. <laughs> yep, and my pink belt. Yeah, that's nice. This is at the Davidson ceremony again. Ah, uh, she was she was there. She was meeting with the Pentagon uh -huh. uh, to talk about uh, ex ex extending the research with the uh, with the discarded military munitions. So she happened to be in D.C. at the same time as a. Uh, as my Davidson Oh, what a lucky ceremony. break to have yeah. her there. It's really symbolic. So we're all there, yeah. yeah. It was really nice, and I hope I made her proud. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. You made all of us proud. Okay, I still we have a couple more. Oh, who is yep. that? This I is, know that man. <laughs> this is Brian Schatz, the senator. And uh, with the Davidson program, you actually uh, got to meet the, the senators from your state and talk, uh, talk oh. with them about specifically... Uh, having uh, education for, for gifted students and like students that uh, excel in especially like one area of study and like trying to cultivate that interest and make it something big. That's yeah. great. That's great that he, you know, yeah. you made him proud too, yeah. I'm sure. I hope but, so. Like, you know, what I was saying earlier, I mean, you make us all proud. You're, you're um, a star from Hawaii. We want as oh, many stars as we can get. What else we got on the yeah. pictures? Oh, the, this there's is, one. Uh, Again, another senator, Maisie Hirono. Just like Maisie Hirono. Yep. And your mom, Holly Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, and that's my mom, too. She came, she came up with me. Um, I went up from USC, and my mom and my sister actually also went up to Washington, D.C. to watch the awards ceremony. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Nice to have a supportive family. It's very important, yep. especially if you're it's good studying. Day. Yeah. Even my physics teacher from USC was there, too. <laughs> right? he was no He kidding. was in a meeting... Uh, he is actually one of the, my current physics teacher was one of the like top brass for the International Science and Engineering Fair. So I actually had met him earlier uh, when I did projects in physics and astronomy. Um, when I went to a science fair, in the International Science Fair in LA, mm -hmm. the year before I started the Hohonokai project. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, was, that was kind of a funny coincidence to, What's to his see name? him there. His name is Christopher Gould. Yeah. Oh, I never another met Christopher. Christopher. I didn't yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got any more photographs, or is that at all? Oh, here yeah. we go. And these That's are my, the award, huh? The, the two awards from my sister and I. Um, I was oh, on perfect, the left. Perfect. 2016 and 2009. Yeah. God, make us all proud. My sister again got hers in a heart performance, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, not the same thing. But then yeah. she ended up in a. She ended up 
majoring in microbiology, so mm. maybe I'll end up majoring in music. Who maybe knows? Ma <laughs> maybe yeah. you can collaborate with yeah. me in space biology. Yeah. So let's talk about you know what you're studying right now in, as a freshman in USC. Are you the uh, youngest guy in the class? Is that what it is? Um, I don't. I might. I might be the youngest. I'm not actually sure. Um, I don't know of anyone younger than me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm studying astronomy, astrophysics, as well as the environmental science, um, and I'm trying to take both sets of classes at the yeah. same time. So it's 36 it's, points a semester. <laughs> it's 22 <laughs> points a semester. Really? So oh, wow. It's, it's not that's that a, much. That's a workload. Um, it's not 36, but yeah, it's five and a half classes. That's a lot. Um, I might have to, I might get the chance to take uh, environmental classes over the summer, actually. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And USC has lots of great programs in environmental science, but you can go to like Catalina Island off of LA and do environmental science research there. And you can also go to the Bahamas and do research there as well. And they have lots of little satellite campuses yeah. around. The Bahamas, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bahamas, probably nice in the summer, oh yeah. Yeah. So, so what happens uh, from this point forward? Are you, you going to graduate early from no. USC? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I could <laughs> try really hard and take 36 units a semester, but no, I think that's that's asking for unnecessary pain. <laughs> You've got to have a life to yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but right now I'm working in the astronomy research group, and they do a thing called helioseismology. So when you think about uh, the Earth and seismology research on the Earth, you're looking at plate tectonics and earthquakes uh -huh. and things like that, yeah. which is very important uh, yeah. for disaster management and things like that. But on the Sun, uh, the helioseismology, which is how the Sun's surface moves, uh, dictates things like solar flares which is also important for disaster management on Earth because solar flares uh, causes big problems with uh, like satellites and with electrical Radio power Radio reception, grids. all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so uh, my group at USC uses a telescope on top of the Mount Wilson Observatory, which is about 20 miles uh, north of campus up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And um, they're looking at uh, just the sun's brightness over time and trying to figure out what's going on just beneath the sur surface of the sun. You don't look directly into the sun, right? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't look at the bad. telescope. <laughs> uh, we have an instrument that does that for uh, us. Ah, better yet. Uh, yeah. yeah, so the USC group is actually a part of, uh, part of a larger group of helioseismology uh, groups from around the world, all run by Cambridge University in England. This will give you a chance to collaborate with people all around the yeah, world, so more, more even than Iolani. Oh yeah, yeah. so um, we have a partnership with a group at Stanford University. And we do a lot of our data processing um, using Stanford computers, as well as the uh, High Performance Computing Center at USC. So uh, you're only a freshman. Yeah. You're doing all this stuff. It's just, wow, blown yeah. away. So what's your what's your plan? I mean, I you know you're a guy who does plan ahead. We know that, and you're very focused. So you must have sort of a vision about where this is all going to go for you. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, I can continue the the research with the astronomy group at USC and hopefully um, uh, learn how to code better uh, to produce better data processing. Uh, code, computer, you're doing that too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll hopefully get to use the larger telescopes up on Mount Wilson to do things like the Juno observations, like looking at Jupiter during the times of the Juno transits. And that'll be very interesting because I love nighttime astronomy especially. Yeah. Although solar astronomy is fun too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hopefully I, I get to continue that and, and work hard in that group, um, but, and then maybe I'll do some environmental research on the side too. Yeah. Hopefully I can yeah. get something together with that. But you know, a lot, a lot, of, uh, a lot of researchers have sat in that chair actually, and I, and I find that, in my, this is my observation anyway, that at some point in their career, um, and it's not when they're freshmen, it's later on, yeah. they connect up with some mentor person mm -hmm. who directs them, who focuses them in, on one major project and they stay with it. They continue to do research in that mm -hmm. project. They become, you know, world experts in that project and keep doing it. I guess that hasn't happened exactly yeah. yet for well, you, but do you have, have any idea about where it's going? Yeah, I have a good mentor uh, for astronomy at, at USC. He's really good. His name is Dr. Rhodes, Dr. Mm -hmm. Edward Rhodes, mm -hmm. and he does the helio seismology. And he was actually one of the first ones to discover that the surface of the sun is, is moving in certain ways. And the entire, this, the entire star is kind of pulsating and um, making Whoa. these... And by studying that, you can learn more things about solar flares. And Should we like be that. worried about the pulsating um, of the sun? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been doing that for, for much longer than we've been around. So, um, 
No, nothing to worry so about. So is right this now. is this? Are yeah. uh, you suggesting to me that maybe this is going to be an area of specialty for you? Yeah. So if I get really into solar astronomy, yeah, I definitely want to continue it for a while. Yeah. And if you take a PhD, oh, I'm, well, I shouldn't say if, because I yeah. know, <laughs> I know, as the day is long, you're taking a PhD and yeah. maybe a number of PhDs <laughs> in a number of scientific areas. But we'll see. but <laughs> what areas would you consider doing yeah. that in? So I I really love astronomy and I love the. Uh, I love especially observation, observational astronomy. Mm -hmm. So astronomy, um, lots of people just take the data and, and work on that. And that's really difficult and really useful. But I especially like the actual taking of the data itself with the telescopes. Yeah. And in Hawaii, that's a really good place to be since yeah. of, uh, because of Mauna Kea. And, All this and uh, suggests to me that there's an article in your future. Are you, are you <laughs> thinking of that too? Are you thinking of writing an article trying yeah. to get in one of the big scientific journals? What do you think? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully I can get published again. Uh, I was a co-author on astronomy and astrophysics. And with the Hohonukai Environmental Science Project, um, I wrote an article for the Marine Technology Science Journal, which was published uh, about a year ago. Yeah. So hopefully I can continue publishing things. Yeah. Well, we'll be looking at the journal Science. Yep. What other journals should we be looking at? <laughs> what, do you, what do you favor? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Still, astronomy and environmental science. I can't okay, really decide right now. What are the right journals now. in those areas? Oh, so uh, astronomy would be astronomy and astrophysics, A and A. Uh -huh. um, that's the really popular one. I think it went all online now, though, so I don't mm -hmm. think it's a paper journey anymore. Um, but that's fine. in science in general, the biggest journal, of course, is Nature. So hopefully, one day I can get a paper in Nature. Well, we'll, we'll, be, nice. we'll be watching Nature. Yep. <laughs> you know. Um, by the way, um, you know, uh, uh, I know you're friendly with your family and everything, wonderful family, uh, your, your mother Holly yep. and your dad Mark. Yeah. Um, but are, are you available for adoption? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, according, according to my mom, probably yes, though. Yeah, so. <laughs> we have a lot more hot, hot water with you. Yeah. A little out of control I, here. I use too much electricity at home, I think. <laughs> Well, That's Chris, it's great to see you. Great yeah, to great catch to up you with too. you. I want to do it again. You, I know you're going to come back and see yeah. everybody and, oh, yeah. and visit the old school, mm -hmm. you know, which you yeah. might still be in had you not dropped out. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and look around at the science, maybe the science fair even. Yeah. And uh, when, when that happens, I'd like to talk to you again and again right. and follow, you know, follow your trajectory here yeah. because you're, you're part of Hawaii no matter where you go, what oh, yeah. you do. And we yeah. want you to be successful and we want you to be a star. And I mean that in the, in the, in the triple Thank sense. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Right. Aloha. See ya. Yep. <laughs>